Okay, good. Yep. Uh, so um, I'm I'm based on the land of the Ngunnawal Nation uh, here in, in Canberra. Uh, and so I too would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and pay my respects uh, to the elders of the Ngunnawal Nation, uh, past and present. Um, okay, so uh, this, this presentation relates to a project which ended a few months ago and which uh, was supported by the Atlas of Living Australia, Terrestrial Ecosystem Research Network, TURN, uh, IMOS, the Integrated Marine Observing System, uh, the ARDC, uh, and representatives from the, the federal government departments at various times of agriculture and environment as the portfolio moved. And the project related to improving the accessibility of data from these research infrastructures to support state of environment reporting. Uh, the particular focus was the, uh, the state of environment report produced uh, in 2021, uh, but uh, behind this, we were hoping also to make the data more accessible for other assessment activities, including state and territory SOE reports uh, and future iterations of the five yearly SOE process. Uh, and following discussions with the SOE authors, we identified two broad areas where they felt they needed better access to the data that were being collected by the ALA, TURN and IMOS, uh, specifically improved and more faceted access to integrated species distribution data. Uh, and I'm not gonna be talking so much about that today, but uh, in practical terms, this was uh, relating to ensuring that it was easy for any uh, of the, the main portions of the, the continent to be able to get time-based lists of uh, how many threatened species have been recorded in that area, or how many introduced species, etc. Uh, the second broad area was to understand just where researchers were going out into the field or into uh, the, the surrounding waters and uh, collecting environmental data, uh, looking at uh, the gaps and the coverage, uh, etc. Uh, across the across the Australian region. Uh, so that for this second broad area, um, the, the plan was to make it easy to get summaries uh, by state or territory or by, um, by a geographic region of the, uh, the kinds of activities that have gone on in those areas, either to survey um, biodiversity in a reasonably standardized way, uh, standard vegetation surveys, bird surveys, um, ongoing um, fish monitoring, systems, etc. Uh, and also um, all of the environmental uh, and, and climatic and landscape uh, measurements that are being collected by TURN and IMOS at many sites uh, and around the country. Uh, and to be able to provide these as a faceted data set that would uh, make it easier to understand just how much activity was going on in each area. So we've developed uh, pipelines in R, um, 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 Sandia did this, um, for processing uh, the data for both of these assets. I'm going to ignore the top part, which is the species occurrence part, uh, and just highlight that uh, for the aggregated data component here, um, the environmental monitoring and observations effort data set, which we've produced as a faceted CSV file, um, we're taking streams of metadata from, from uh, the TURN sites, uh, the IMOS data sets uh, in AODN, uh, and summary from the ALA of uh, sample event-based data uh, to produce this time, space, and category faceted data set. And then from that, um, we derived some more summary data sets that came closer to answering the kinds of questions that the researchers had. Uh, and in order to support this uh, aggregated data set and um, provide uh, the, the structure for the facet also in the more derived data sets, uh, we wanted to have a reasonably understandable uh, and not too expansive vocabulary of the earth science features that were being uh, measured by each, uh, by each data set, um, each source cited uh, through this path. Uh, and uh, I'm, I, think, I think I've got two slides on this, so I'll, I'll skip to this one. Um, 
part of the challenge here is that um, obviously IMOS, TURN and ALA are using different approaches to these things. Uh, for TURN, it was primarily organized around their, their feature vocabulary. Uh, which is uh, a nice representation of the things that get measured at turn sites. For IMOS, the, uh, the keywords that we were able to use were basically global change master directory terms uh, from the metadata associated with the AODN data sets. And for the ALA, uh, we were using the structure of the national species lists. And uh, these overlap. Uh, in certain ways, but also um, represented some challenges for integration. In particular, if you look at the, the land features and the ocean features uh, on this slide, uh, the ocean features really uh, from GCMD is a series of categories primarily of, um, of the things, uh, I suppose, of the measurement categories that are, that are collected uh, within uh, marine uh, marine data collection, whereas the uh, the turn way of breaking up the land side of this was much more organised around uh, the, the 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 features themselves that uh, were being observed, rather than um, primarily considering uh, the the measurement categories. Uh, and similarly, um, the 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 organisation of uh, taxonomic groups was very different across the three. So uh, we we took a decision to use GCMD as the the fundamental vocabulary, uh, but to augment it uh, to make sure that the the turn feature terms were properly mapped, uh, and also to substitute uh, the biological classification from GCMD. Uh, for the one uh, that's well, for the Australian National Species List, because they represented a more logical way to organize uh, biodiversity data across both marine and terrestrial areas. In particular, uh, categories such as invertebrates appear in the biological classification and don't easily map to uh, anything that corresponds to uh, the way that terrestrial observers might go out and uh, carry out a reasonably consistent survey. Uh, we developed a, a vocabulary which um, is downloadable from the EcoAssets uh, website uh, that, uh, as, as seen here, uh, uses URIs from GCMD for the, the major categories, uh, but uh, also has some major terms from uh, the national species lists uh, seen down at the bottom, uh, and um, additionally from the, the term feature vocabulary. But all of these are mapped via um, parent URIs back into uh, the, the top level uh, GCMD categories. Uh, we also produced a second file that identified the actual labels that were being used in TURN and IMOS that got mapped to each of these terms. Uh, and this was an opportunity to deal with some, some real world deduplication that was going on. Uh, for example, if you look at the salinity density uh, terms uh, in the oceans category, uh, the metadata coming through AODN varied in how these were uh, formatted. Uh, and so we were in any case processing the strings in order to find uh, the alternatives there. And it made sense to, uh, to, to summarize that in a file. Uh, we, as I said, we, um, we produced these initially as CSVs and that's how you can download them today from uh, the EcoAsset site. Uh, but I've been looking at using Pool Party to try to uh, structure this, and uh, right now I seem to have hung Pool Party, so I'm I'm quite interested in the OGC tool in case that helps me do this a little bit better. Uh, but the intention is to produce something that is uh, easier to use in the context of vocabulary and ontology tools than uh, the CSV file that I was um, presenting just now. Um, uh, as, as I said, um, if you go to ecoassets.org.au, uh, you can download these data. We've tried to provide quite a bit of metadata about them. Uh, the DOI for this data set uh, is directly referenced inside the metadata for all of the data sets that use the vocabulary. 
Uh, and uh, I just want to acknowledge all of the people from the different NRIs and particularly Sandia uh, who did most of the real work of um, writing the R code, et cetera, uh, to, to um, produce the pipelines that generated these data. So 